is Zach. Can you hear me all right? Indeed. Indeed. All right, excellent. What's the weather like in uh, in Tennessee right now? It's pretty. It's, it's quite lovely actually when it Can doesn't rain. <laughs> yeah, we've been getting a lot of that right now too. Can you hear me? Muted, Sam, oh, muted, somehow. Muted. Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, it's Sam. Sam. Hey. hey. <laughs> It's That's like my Molly. first time. This is my first time using Clubhouse, so you're all experiencing it with me. I love it. I love it. Coming in, coming in hot. I mean, I figured, you know, with y'all's background of animalators, you know, you'd be coming in here hot on the podcast, ready to roll. <laughs> oh, wow, animalators. It's been like three years. Does anyone even remember that anymore? I feel like it's <laughs> uh, it's a bygone era at this point, but. Oh, so great. Well, I mean, like we can get into it here in a bit. I don't want to spoil too much for folks who are still trickling in. We'll give some folks um, a few minutes to come into the room and then we can start things up. But I mean, what we were just talking about before we hopped on the call is how much I remembered it as a way to like really get to know folks in the industry that I didn't know. I mean, you just had like a really strong collective of different people who were hopping on that podcast, which was really cool. Yeah, no, it was, it was a blast. I, I do miss it occasionally. Um yeah, it, it, it was really fun. It was just like a great, I mean, it was such a good learning opportunity for us um, and me in particular, just a great, great way to sit down and just, you know, be genuinely curious with all these people I, I really look up to. And um, yeah, yeah I, I missed that part of it. For sure. I remember making Zach do a podcast when he, he didn't even know that he was going to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how it went? I literally it did, remember. yeah. No, we were, we were at Fenwick's uh with your sister actually oh nice. i was doing some like marketing work for us and uh, i was like we're gonna do a podcast and zach's gonna be the host and he had never heard anything about it before that uh, <laughs> and it went great you know he was he was wonderful at it it's good it's how good how many episodes do we make it to it's like 50 episodes or something like that wow I don't remember. it's pretty close well, I mean, even just with what the low bar is with this clubhouse stuff that we're doing, which is literally just like guerrilla podcast style. I mean, it still takes a little bit of planning and some work. So I know how much went into it for like the animalator stuff. I know that like, even when you get things systemized, there's still planning and stuff and all the things that go into it, editing things together, the promotion of it. I mean, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, yeah. 60 episodes. Last one wow. was uh, SoundCloud says two years ago. That feels like way longer. Um, crazy longer crazy time than that but well um yeah let's uh let's jump into it so uh you know just quick introduction as some folks are finally trickling in um so welcome to another episode of mograph lunch uh you know these are essentially weekly conversations about the motion design industry where we talk about news portfolio projects general industry topics and then occasionally we have cool studios like the folks at iv join us today for what is kind of like an ama type situation uh we have going on which is exciting um so i'm joined about uh, my name is Matt Garrison, one of the co-founders and executive producers at Dash, uh, but I'm joined by the co-founders of IV, Zach Dixon, executive creative director, and Sam Calden, uh, the executive producer. Um, IV is an animation studio based in Nashville, Tennessee. They've worked with clients like Bad Robot, Nike, Netflix, and Amazon, and they have tackled some huge studio projects like creating tabletop games, uh, video game, and are even working on getting an animated television show off the ground. Ooh, excited to learn more about that. Uh, but yeah, welcome welcome to the podcast, to the show. Welcome to the thingamabob. Glad to have welcome you guys. Thank you. Your, welcome to your podcast, Mac. <laughs> That's what it is. We'll call it a podcast. We're glad to, we're glad to have you here. We're glad yeah. to have you here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, yeah, well, we, we are honored. It's great. It's my first clubhouse experience ever. So it's, it's, I, it's very, seems very nice so far. It's, it's good. It's good. There's, I, there's so uh, many wonderful people listening. Look at, look at all of them. I know we have a good crew here. Um, I like it. See some familiar faces, see some new ones in here too, which is really nice. Um, I know, you know, I've known you guys now gosh, like probably since we like first started, I think we randomly had like lunch one day at Blendfest, like maybe like the first one. And I think yeah. our then, our Ace of Sausages. Ace of Sausages. Yeah, that's right. Good times. Good times. But you know, as far as like, you know, studios go, I feel like we have always kind of had like this pairing to a certain degree when you're like one of the few studios in the South, you know, you kind of have to look 
with your brethren and see, you know, who else is holding <laughs> it down down here. And I was always so impressed with the fantastic work y'all were able to do, um, you know, coming out of Nashville. And I think like, particularly when smaller markets were like really just getting started on being able to hold their own for a studio, you guys were definitely one of the few I think felt like were leading the way. Um, so maybe like a good place to even begin with all this is really just talking about, you know, how old it started. Like, you know, did you guys always know you wanted to run a studio? Did it just kind of naturally happen? What was the background there? It, it was similar to the start of Animalators, actually. Sam sat me down one day and he's like, we're going to start a studio. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember it being quite so forceful. But, uh, no, but, you know, it was, yeah, I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> paraphrasing. Uh, no, a little bit. We, we were in college. So I, I, they, the only reason we were able to do it is because we, we knew absolutely nothing. We were so naive about everything. Mm -hmm. um, and... We were in college together. Mm -hmm. um, Zach was a year above me, and we started taking a bunch of the same classes and got to know each other. I played Xbox in his room late at night a lot. Um, and uh, I think just enjoyed working together. And at one point, I was mm -hmm. like, hey, you want to try starting a studio? And he was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, we had, so yeah, we did. <laughs> Yeah, we were we were doing a lot of like film classes together. Mm -hmm. So we would, you know, work on short films together. Mm -hmm. We would both do short films and um, really liked each other's work um, at that time. And then, uh, yeah, like I had I had started freelancing and and doing. Um, mm -hmm. We also toured on this thing. Our 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 school did this music group or whatever, and um, I had started making um, like kind of lyric videos, essentially for like mm -hmm. we'd tour like all these like camps and stuff and so that was like the entryway into motion graphics I'm like i don't know maybe we could uh maybe we could get paid to make videos and you know animations for people and yeah we bought a red camera Sick. um with so uh, all, your, all the money you had <laughs> yeah all the money we had we bought a red camera I, uh, actually it was money we didn't have we used yeah, yeah. <laughs> we used a student loan we used student uh, loans uh, for that. yeah that's amazing a red camera that's amazing like we'll put this to good use i'll take half of those loans and put this towards my camera you know it was a nice yeah. day when we paid that off we actually paid it off long after we didn't have the camera the camera got stolen at oh, some point no. um hopefully uh, not hopefully. like immediately after buying it. <laughs> no no it, yeah. it took, took a few years um but uh it was a nice milestone to pay off that student loan that's so funny. So when y'all first started, it sounds like to me that it wasn't even necessarily animation that y'all were doing initially. It was a lot more film than at that point. It was a pretty was even of, split. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, we had a we had a uh, somewhat regular like recurring contract work with a, a church here in Nashville that we did a, a ton of stuff with, um, and that helped us. That was most animation um and that, that helped us move forward and then we were doing real bad interview testimonial videos for clients <laughs> in Nashville for those first few years on the other side never weddings though we never well we did shoot one never did that, that was, was a it line, was just a favor it was a favor was a line was, in yeah. sand <laughs> you you're not in the motion world if someone hasn't asked you to shoot their wedding you know <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah so when y'all were first going though I mean I guess really did y'all start directly after school so you didn't really have much work experience like outside of just doing general freelance stuff right zero no. work experience <laughs> no experience don't necessarily recommend that um but you know it's 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 worked out fine just had to learn a lot of lessons the hard way so interesting um, do you think looking back on that like like if you did it all over again do you think you would have tried to get more experience or were you so like naive to some of the pitfalls of the industry that it was just like better to jump into it without like knowing some of the hardships that kind of come with it i don't think i would say don't do it um <laughs> but it definitely took us a lot longer to figure out how how a lot of things worked uh, oh yeah which was not a not a bad thing we can come to all of the problems that we faced without somebody else's solution in our minds mm -hmm. already so there's a little bit of a benefit to it also um and I think that that has helped us in a lot of ways. I think in those early years, we just approached projects differently mm -hmm. than, than motion studios. We we were just a lot more involved in like messaging and branding than, than I think is typical. Um, and that's because that's just what made sense to us. Um, and, and clients seem to resonate with it. 
but it, 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 it as far as I know it is that it wasn't like very normal practice so so hmm. I know how we approached it if we had worked somewhere else yeah, and I think we got to find like a little bit of what we love because of that and like the things that, that we're good at. And, you know, you start to trend towards the thing that, you, you know, you're naturally into or good at. But but on the other hand, it's like we didn't know what a producer did or like why <laughs> that's different than like a creative director or anything right. else. And like that information is really great to have and something that you, is, you know, I would rather have not had to just like stumble upon. Um, honestly, it's one of the many reasons we like started one of the many reasons we started Animalators is just like, let's like just ask some questions like mm. how does how do things run where, where you work mm. or like how, how have you know how have you been freelancing or whatever and um and you know going to things like blend helps and you know enormously and uh Swarovski, you know mm. sent some some of our producers there to their workshops and stuff and, and that we, you know learned a ton of, on that but um yeah i don't know it's it, it's hard to say like i, sure. I wouldn't take anything back like we're, we're here where we are because of you know the, the path we took um right and you know hard to say how it would have would have shaked out differently but it, it's it, you know i i am always jealous of just like oh, i'd be great to you know spend a year at somebody's studio just to see yeah. like how they did it and 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 learn from um all of the you know other wonderful people in our industry well i do think it's like you know i talk to people about this all the time just you know how stressful it is to like run a company right but like how much more stressful it'd be if i didn't have a partner like in crime to do this like having Corey to be able to like go through and navigate and be able to talk to some of these really tough things like i don't know i mean how do y'all feel y'all's partnership has like strengthened your company like do you feel like you could be doing it like on your own you know oh that's a good question uh i don't know if i could do it on my own i don't think i'd want to uh so i don't <laughs> think it really matters um <laughs> No, no. I mean, yeah, like, like you said, I mean, it's, it's just amazing to have each other to, to bounce those things off of, um, the, you know, a lot of difficult decisions to be made. Mm -hmm. is, is Miso, uh, jumping around, Sam? Yeah, yeah, he's out there barking, so I'm locking him in here so that he can. Sam has an <laughs> adorable, puppy. adorable new puppy named Miso. I'll put him on the video. Um, no, one can oh, see. Let me see. no one can until, see. Until later, but, uh, Oh my gosh, look at this fur ball. A, is that, little, oh. Good little puppy. It's a beanie baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. He is so cute. He is so yeah, for, cute. For everyone listening, what's the what what kind of dog is it, Sam? It's a cavapoo. Cav cavapoo. Cavapoo. Four, four and a half month old cavapoo. Yeah, cavapoo looks like a big dust ball. A big gust of wind comes through there. Cavapoo is gone. <laughs> <laughs> He's mostly hair. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of dog under there. Oh, that's great. That's great. When y'all were thinking, all right, so you're thinking you're going to start a studio, you know, you like to chose work, you like working together. Um, y'all are, I, I assume, are y'all from Nashville originally? Did you happen to go to school there in Nashville? What was the impetus for Nashville? No, <laughs> neither of us are from Nashville. We're from different parts of Pennsylvania. Um, met in school in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And that I mentioned that church earlier, it was in Nashville. So that okay. was like one reason that we oh, had to be in Nashville. Um, that, that was it. Um, we visited it once and we were like, this is a cool place. So let's, let's move here and start a business. Nice. That's great. Yeah. We didn't want to start. I, I think we knew that like, we weren't ready for like a, a massively expensive and also just flooded city, like New York or LA, like starting out. And so like, but we really like the kind of, I don't know, the, it's a creative industry town that mm -hmm. like in Nashville. Um, and so like, I feel like there's a lot of like-minded people here, which is, mm -hmm. is really fun. Um, so yeah, but yeah, we kind of just picked a random city and moved there and started a company, which is. So uh, this was right after, on it. <laughs> right after the recession too. Uh, and just a few years and uh, Nashville had not been affected all that badly oh, it's a big, big healthcare town sure. uh, and healthcare is pretty resilient to um recessions and hmm. so it was a, it was doing pretty well economically that's good was was your goal primarily to try to build it and grow it within the context of like 
Nashville, the greatest Tennessee area. Was that kind of like your goal? Like, all right, most of the clients we have healthcare, you know, like you said, Sam's like recession proof. Was that kind of, did y'all have like a plan? I guess maybe that's the question. Like what sort of plan yeah. did you have when you first started your studio? Was there uh, one? Oh man, <laughs> I don't, I'm sure we thought we had a plan. It was um, like this asshole calling me out on, on the podcast. <laughs> no, there was definitely a business plan. Like I, I showed it to my parents, I think, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I think we had a we had a business mom. Plan. This is a real we job, I swear. Like, on we had like a five year business plan, and and we ended up actually like hitting most of our goals in that business. Did we really? Um, I, I, I think don't even, we did. I don't remember um, but we, I don't think we looked at it after the first like yeah, two months uh, ever. Um, we did, I think, want want to try and build up that local client base. Did so much networking locally in, in the first few years, which is not something I love, but it's something I did. A oh, lot. It was awful. Uh, <laughs> I, we, we would go, we would go to these random like networking events. Like it was just like a business networking event, and we would put on our college shirts and we made business cards and we just tried to make small talk with like these local business people. And it was some of the worst evenings of my entire oh, life. Like no. it was just. Just like just everybody's trying to sell you something and it was just so weird it was just the weirdest thing i maybe got one job from going to those meetings. yeah i was about to oh, ask no, so I, like, think, I, I got a lot more than that I, do we really okay <laughs> uh, that's good. i would that's say great. i would say they they worked um they worked that's, that's oh one side of it. i don't know, I don't know. That. um <laughs> Sex like that was, that was beneficial. I just what the hell were we doing? This yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is where most of the early work came from, and and it, and it really did work um, for for a long time. Hmm. Um, well, it's so interesting to me because like I think that's a really common question as far as like what I'm talking to like either you know students who are coming out or people who are considering starting their own studio. You know, the question is like, how do you get this work? Like, how do you land bigger projects? How do you start to build this network? And it's really interesting to me because you know we kind of did it the same way. Like we would go to like American Marketing Association AMA meetings or um, you know AIGA American Institute of Graphic Arts and try to just meet other people in the community. And I think that's helped a ton for us as far as just like oh you should meet my boss or recommend recommendations yeah. like that. So it sounds like it worked the same for y'all as well too. Yeah, and it, there's a bit of a snowballing effect too. Mm -hmm. Like the, the really thing is just like keep at it. Like do great work, keep at it, be nice to everyone that you meet, like do your best for those clients. Mm -hmm. And like, and, and part of our mantra, like at the beginning was like, we're just going to make every single project as amazing as we possibly can, whether or not the, you know, the budget justifies it and, you know, try and push our portfolio as much as possible. And then, um, yeah. And I don't know if that's like at, at some point, you know, you just keep pushing and keep pushing. You can work yourself into the ground that way. But yeah. I think that that was what helped us like just grow as, as artists, but then also grow the business, um, you know, d during those early years. And then, yeah, I mean, we, we've had like, it's just crazy how that stuff works. Cause it's just yeah. like, you get, get those first clients and then, you know, that they'll know somebody who'll recommend you or they'll, they'll leave their job and go somewhere else and mm. then tell the people there about it. And, you know, we'll get people that, we have, you know, we, we met three years ago and they'll just call us up. Like, I've been looking to, you know, get you, <laughs> get you work since we talked forever ago. And it's like, Oh, wow. You're like, sweet. You, you that. exist still. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, the snowball effect's really interesting to me and, you know, building on that a little bit, ha, pun intended building on snowball nice. effect, the worst. Um, do you feel like there was one project that y'all had made in the past that just kept getting referenced for more and more work? You know, like the one piece that just snowballed into all this other work because everyone was like, oh yeah, we want something like that. We want something like that. There's a couple, um, but I think probably the biggest, the one that has brought in the most work, it doesn't anymore, but for a long time it did was the Reddit mobile app video that, that oh, we yeah. made. Um, I remember that one. That was quite a while ago and it, it had it's one of those videos that, that came in and they were like we need it in two and a half weeks or something right we were yeah. like okay so we scrambled we, we put it all together it had the voice uh, voiceover from tommy chong uh, <laughs> yeah that's right probably super high when he recorded it um <laughs> and we worked with w willie russell in in brooklyn mm -hmm. on some the animation for that and justina stasic uh oh. on the illustration and um just turned into something really cool um i wouldn't say anything about it is the best work that we've ever right. done but it, it was just something that 
that had legs and, and kept on kept on moving. That's so cool. Yeah. And then I would say the, the other one more from like a relationship standpoint is like we we did the Echo Show, the first Amazon Alexa with a mm. screen. We did the So the that came one. from the Reddit video. <laughs> did it really? Oh, no it way. all connects. Oh, it all connects. Oh, man, that's yeah. so funny. Well, it was just like <laughs> that that video, like we, then we just like we did that. It was like the first thing you saw when you, you turn on the 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 Amazon uh, Echo Show, which was amazing. I, that was like such a such a cool thing to be able to be a part of. And then um and then that just snowballed into a ton of Amazon work across a ton of different departments. And then, you know, those people left, like one of those key people left and went over to Oracle. And now we're, now we're doing mm. a ton of work for Oracle. And that, that led to, we're doing a ton of work right now for like Logitech and like nice. it, it, it snowballed into some, or Zumper, like the Zumper series that we just put out on Instagram. Like that yeah, was from great. somebody who used to work at, Inst or at, at Amazon. Um, and he was like, I loved working with you there. Like I want you to work with this new company I'm at. And, um, so that's, that's how it happens. Like, it's just, you just keep doing the work, hmm. do your best, keep meeting people and do the best you can. And, and don't burn bridges. I mean, yeah. even right yeah. there, just like ending everything on a positive note, even if things like dip or is not like great, or you're running into some friction at a point in the project, always making sure that it ends well. Cause you get these situations where those people go to other companies and they're going to be your biggest advocates, you know? I would say there's two kinds of people and you deal with them at different stages in your studio. If someone's trying to build a studio out here um, later, which is where we are now, it's like most of the stuff comes from people that we've worked with before. And they're like, I really like working with you. I want to work with you again. That's great. In the beginning, it was very much like you just need to be the person that's in front of them when they need something. And, yeah. uh, and people are generally lazy and we'll just work <laughs> with whoever is, is like easiest. Um, and, that's so true. and so at the beginning of the studio for the first few years, that's what it was like, just being in front of, in front of people, there was no work history with any of them. Mm -hmm. It was just being the easiest solution for them. Um, and then it, it slowly transitions into, um, people seeking you out. Do you feel like, um, there was a point in time where you felt like that shift really started to happen. Like, you know, I think like sometimes you're kind of figuring, you talked about like early goals, right, Sam, that like you had these early goals, you kind of checked them off. Um, you know, was when I know you had sort of a tentative plan, you actually said that you kind of accidentally kind of checked off all those boxes. You know, when y'all set out, were you like, was it all creative endeavor? Like we want to be making the cool stuff that's out there. We want to like grow our studio. Like what was sort of like, that thought that kind of eventually put you in a position where folks were seeking you out like they are now, you think? Yeah. For a long time, it, that that's all that it was, was just like, we want to make cool things and, mm -hmm. and make cool enough things that other people want those things. Like yeah. that, yeah. that's basically the whole, <laughs> basically the entire business plan. Um, make cool stuff. <laughs> and if we, can, if we can grow along the way, then that's also cool. Uh, Cause we like people, we like working with other artists and, and that's amazing. Um, and that's what it was for, for a long time, uh, really until only somewhat somewhat recently um where we really tried to define a much larger vision for the studio than and just make cool stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, at some level it's it's always going to be we just want to make cool stuff and like it's cool that we get paid and can make a living from it um but we we also want uh we want to be shooting for for bigger more audacious goals than that also mm -hmm. um so we've been doing a lot of groundwork to to shape that vision in the last hmm. year or so. Well, yeah. I know. Oh, I was, go ahead, Zach. I was gonna say, like, yeah, like stepping back, like I think when I started, like I, I really, I, I honestly just wanted to get paid to learn. Like I, I wanted to get paid hmm. to get better, right? Like I wanted to put myself in positions where it's like there are so many things that is hard about this, right? Like there's so many like not just making the creative work, but also like being a leader and a boss and building a business and all that stuff. And, and when I looked, you know, like a lot of the goals for my life are still, the, still the same. Um, 
and but I've learned like kind of how challenging it will be to get there. Like I want to, mm. I want to make great work for great clients, but also I want to make video games and films yeah. and, and television shows and, and all that stuff. And, and at the, at the beginning and still in a lot of ways, it's like, what, what a wonderful way to get, to get paid, to learn how to direct things, mm. get paid to learn how to animate things or, or make people feel something or get paid to, you know, fail and get better at mm. leading people and being a boss mm. and, like those are all skills that take practice. And so I, I think that has been a lot of like kind of the first act of, of mm -hmm. IV is like, let's, you know, figure out how to do this. And what, you know, we're always still figuring it out mm -hmm. and, and always trying to get better. Um, but, but as Sam kind of alluded to, like, we're, we're kind of at that place where like, I've got two kids now, like we're, we're a little bit older and like, I feel like for the first time, how long have we been doing this, Sam? Was it eight years or it's hard to say because we only started doing animation maybe six years ago, like mm -hmm. together. But, um, you know, for that first bit, it's just been like, it's been a lot of super long hours. Like it's been exhausting, frankly. Mm -hmm. And then, then this year hit. And so like, now it's like, look, how do we keep this going? How do we keep growing? But how, now, how do we do it sustainably? And how do we do it in a way that the people who work for us l love to be here? Mm -hmm. And how, how do we attract amazing people to our team? And so, um, and, and create an environment that really support, supports the creators of, of our work over the actual end, end product because um, ultimately it's, it's great people who make great work. And, um, and as kind of the leaders of the studio, like we, we have a, you know, a responsibility to that. Um, so that's, that's been where we've been, been doing a lot of our work lately uh, at the studio. No, that's really well said, Zach. And I think it shows, you know, of course, the quality of your work has looked phenomenal. You know, I think everyone in the industry and everyone who's listening can see the work developed over the last five years and how it's getting better. And so you can tell the process and the commitment that people are bringing to it is, is improved. But also on top of that, I, I really enjoyed some of these auxiliary uh, creations that y'all have been working on, like Moonrakers. And then are you talking about working on like a television show? You know, I think it's really interesting studios that are sort of starting to create these secondary arms that are really these creative pursuits uh, or, or things that are helping make their jobs a little bit easier. I think it was like anime who started boards and then that turned into a whole thing, you know, where y'all have kind of done these like tabletop games and stuff. Maybe you could talk a little bit towards like, what was, you know, uh, was, was there anything fueling these like extra creative, like the gaming stuff? Was it just like personal passion that you want to be doing stuff? Like how did that end up? How do you go from motion studio to start making like some of these other pieces to it, you know? <laughs> Uh, I think I, I just jump in on this one. Um, so Zach has ADD. I do not. To, uh, <laughs> creative pursuits, not actually ADD. Not diagnosed. Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, and so he's always trying, trying to do so. Way back in, I don't know how long ago, it was six years now, we, we tried to make this mobile app called Taste that was like a, a rating app. It was kind of like a Yelp thing that- sh Should have done that, but- Was so. different. Yeah, it, was a, it, it turns out that it was a terrible idea. Well, I, the idea, I still like the idea. Trying to oh, do it was great. a terrible idea. Sure. Um, and then after that, we were like, well, we, we couldn't make a, an, a social app, but we could definitely mm -hmm. make a video game. So. Zach decided he didn't want to make a mobile game, uh, so he just did make a mobile game. It took about three years, and he did 95% of it himself, but uh, it, it it was that, and then that was done, and that, and that was something we're really proud of, and then, like, it was, it was kind of like, what's the next thing? Uh, hmm. And so a few years ago... Um, him and another one of our team team members, Austin, um, come to me after the Christmas break, and I like, hey, we we really want to make a board game. <laughs> could we could we do that? <laughs> um, and I was like, I don't know, whatever. I'm like, sure, sure. <laughs> um, so sorry, then, class, we can't take that on. We're making what? Yeah, a board game. Sorry. <laughs> um, it took a long time to to. 18 months just in development. Um, and it wasn't the only thing we were working on. It wasn't the only thing we were working on. <laughs> yeah. Part-time part about it. Yeah, <laughs> at this point, everyone that was working on it was had a full-time job doing something else at the studio. Sure. Um, and it just turned into something that we ended up being really, really proud of. It, it is a really good game. It's gotten a lot of good response. And nice. 
we took that um and i think this ties into a lot of things but the the uh the idea of the studio the idea of doing these other products um it it, it comes back to us wanting to be both a really good business and a really good creative studio uh, mm-hmm. making really good work and and having a business that that sustains that really well um and so we looked at this and we saw this this market opportunity the first game being rankers did really well and we said we think we can build on this we think we can mm-hmm. use all the skills that we've gained making marketing mm-hmm. and advertising for other people and take that and and develop it into something for ourselves that that will have like a huge uh revenue potential like be a really good business um mm-hmm. And, and that ties back into the whole goal of the studio that again, what I was talking about before this groundwork that we're, we're trying to lay for the future vision of the studio. Mm. Um, and a large part of that is is, sustain, is, is around sustainability. Mm. Um, I don't mean environmental sustainability, sure. though that's something That'd we be nice. care about yeah. a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not, not against <laughs> that. Um, and I more mean like personal, emotional, uh, mm-hmm. physical sustainability um, for creative people because the creative industry is pretty um, historically has has maybe been a little bit of an exploitative industry of sure. its workforce and um, and we wanted to see if we could build a business that didn't didn't need any of that that, that could support eight hour work days and never working on weekends and. Um, and part of that is having the, the financial stability to be able to support that sustainability, to never need that that project that you that has a two week deadline. Um, and um, so that's how the games. We we saw this opportunity with the games with this products division, and that it could feed back into the business as a whole to help provide that security and sustainability, so that we could grow in a way that really let us support the people that choose to work with us. Um, and, uh, and, and we can all have a really fun time doing it. Yeah. And, and, and part of that like initial desire that came out of it was like, it, it'd be amazing. Like I, we just work with such wonderful people. There's just some such wonderfully talented people on our team. And then also, you know, all, all of the, the freelancers and contract workers that we have, it's like, I feel like there is so much amazing talent, you know, in, in the motion design industry. Right. And, and I feel like what if we could harness that and, and make mm-hmm. products that are like developed by us that could, mm-hmm. that could generate revenue. And it's really, really hard. I mean, we, <laughs> we like, that was kind of the initial desire with taste. It was the initial desire with bouncy smash, our video mm-hmm. game, which made no money. Um, mm-hmm. And we've just been trying little things along the way to see like, mm-hmm. what, what can be that first thing that like, you know, sticks that, that we're really proud of that, that, um, that we're able to kind of take this creative energy that we, you know, we love doing the client work, but the, like, could we take that, put it into something that people love and that people actually want to back with their, you know, their wallet, they want to pay for it. And we, we, we found that in Moonrakers and then, um, and, and we really see that as a launching off point to, you know, we, we did follow that up with Veiled Fate. We've got a new game um, that we're going to announce uh, pretty soon here. Um, and then, you know, then the long-term vision there is, is, is video games. And then we've, mm. we've also been, um, I've written a, a pilot with uh, Seth Worley that we've been trying to make um, that we have a, a trailer for a sizzle reel coming out um, in, uh, in the, within the month. So, cool. right. um, yeah, we can talk yeah, anybody, about yeah, it. Yeah, if anybody here wants a sneak peek at that, uh, you can go to the carrier. Oh, wow. You're just going to put it out there. TV. <laughs> hey, I, it's only, don't share it with anyone. If, you, if you're here, it's your special, <laughs> special treat. There you go. The carrier.tv only for this audience only. You know, don't <laughs> tell your friends. Keep it super secretive. Well, I think it's like really really rad uh i was born in the 80s so i can say rad i was like really rad that y'all are doing that because you know 
I think it goes by the wayside, but people who are running their own shops, running their own studios, you know, it's this weird combination of like, for the most part, a lot of us got into it from a creative background. You know, as y'all were saying, you want to make cool stuff. You want to build something great that people are happy to make good work and things like that. But like when you're a creative and you bring that creative mind to like an entrepreneurship role, it's pretty unique. Like, you know, I don't know if y'all had any business background, but like, I definitely didn't, right? Like my background was creative. And then it's like, you learn stuff along the way on how to run a business, which just means that you're thinking about creative ways to solve business problems, as opposed to like a, like, you know, grounded, like, this is the action. This is what you do. And so like, as a result, I think you can concoct and create these like unique solutions or unique ideas, or you start feeling that there's a better way to do things. And like, I know I was totally surprised by like, how much I would enjoy entrepreneurship, you know, but like, I think there are a lot of l- parallels with a creative. So if you're really good at creative, I think there's a lot of people out there who would really enjoy the entrepreneurship side of things. I get a notification. Sorry. I get a notification every time somebody downloads something from the carrier. And uh, so, so somebody out there is re- reading that pitch deck. So <laughs> <laughs> let me know what you think. Yeah, that's right. Maybe uh, it is the person you need to read it, you know, right now. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, yeah. I mean, back I think, I think you're absolutely right. Um, Entrepreneurship, business, running a business is really just solving a bunch of problems every day, um, and that's that's also what creativity is um, is is coming up with a solution to a problem that's in front of you. Um, and so, from a sensibility standpoint, I do think there's there's a ton of overlap there. Uh, there is still the like grind of the business tasks oh, that, yeah. that I don't think I necessarily um, you get that random tax document you're like what the hell is this like oh uh, yeah I don't know. let's see uh, yeah I mean in my march a lot a large part of my march was was spent focusing on increasing a working capital line of credit which is um, you know just you did it though very stimulating yeah. stuff yeah it happens oh yeah um, <laughs> so I so like talk to our banker like every day yeah so like yes and no there's right. a lot of yeah, there's still a lot of creative problem solving um but there's also just that like <laughs> you gotta just do it if if you want to oh yeah grow. way more forms than i thought i would have to fill out in my life like just random things you have to sign up for you're hiring someone in like a different state and you gotta go do stuff there but their state does it differently than your state and you're like why am i dealing with this i gotta wait till you try and do international things so, so we're with the with the products with the board games oh we're now shipping, we're shipping these things internationally <laughs> and the the tax barriers <laughs> import export uh uh, we hired a COO just to manage these things. Yeah, on, on the game side. On the game yeah. side of things. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot. Sam's, Sam's texting people in China. He's got friends in China that <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, never yeah. Met, met that he just texts with all the time. That's so, so funny. Well, when things open back up, at least you have friends in all these different places you can go visit. You know, oh, I can't you wait. <laughs> um, so another follow-up question to that, because the product stuff's really interesting to me. So, how have y'all and I guess how have y'all kind of like structured that? Like, are you basically just at this point you're like, okay, cool, we're doing products, we're gonna have a list of ideas and things we want to do. We're putting X percent of like our revenue into this development, more or less. Is it just kind of that commitment on like a strict percentage of money that's coming in is now going to product development? It's great. Yeah, question. I don't know that Zach can answer this. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, no. You want to? You want to? I want to hear your answer. <laughs> Oh, you know, I, I would say uh, my answer is we're we're actively figuring that out. Uh, mm-hmm. I can only speak sure. on the on the like creative side, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we have like a billion LLCs now. You know, it's like what? How does this all like? It's so many bank accounts. It's like where is all the money? No, I'm just kidding, um, <laughs> but not really. Um, <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, it's been. We're still working on it. We've, we've sure. got two full time staff on on the game side that that's all they do um so we got katie our coo and then austin mm. our our head of games he does a lot of content and helps you know make, make sure that best of all comes out so it helps that it's got some of its own full staff um mm. and then we 
we're still, it's something that we're actively working on that isn't working super well right now, but we're mm. figuring it out. It's like, you know, sharing staff between projects, like trying to find mm. a way to treat these, like I, you know, these, these larger projects as like kind of longer extended client projects. And like, how does it work, you know, with, you know, producers over here and right. operations over there, like that, that's, it's, it's a challenge and I think it's getting better, but we've got more work to do uh, on that side of things. Um, but I think your question was maybe aimed more at the business side, which is all Sam. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, on the product development side of things, what we're trying to do, like we have these board games, we know we can make board games and sell them well. We have, we have pretty proven um, marketing and advertising strategies. We know we can grow that aspect of the business. So that is what we are focusing on right now um, for the next, next couple of years. That's the real focus is just really pushing board games as, as hard as we can. Um, looking longer term than that we really want to find a way where anybody that works with us on the the animation side of things um, on the ivy studio side of things has the opportunity to come up with something that they want to bring to market some mm -hmm. kind of product and and for this other side that we call ivy workshop mm -hmm. um, to support that uh, that opportunity and and be able to help them bring it to market um, and have them still have like a, a good amount of ownership in that. Um, and and um, that's, that comes a little bit back to the sustainability thing. We want to create a sustainable environment for these artists. So, so we want to grow and have a great business, but we also want to give these people the opportunity to make money off of products that, that we help them sell. That's so cool. I mean, y'all, for, for two guys who were like, when they first started their career, really didn't have much of a plan. It sounds like you very <laughs> much have a plan, which is really cool. Um, you know, I think back and like, I know for us as well, like it was very similar, very similar to you guys in the sense that we kind of started, we didn't really have a plan. We were just making cool stuff, you know, and just kind of seeing where it goes. And only in the last couple of years, so I think we really started to ground ourselves and like where we want to go, where we want to be uh, and all that. Um, so another thing I always get a lot of questions about, um, from people who are either considering starting a studio or students who are fresh out of school is like, you know, things that we would have done differently now that I've like started Dash and been doing it for, we've been doing it for five years, you know, looking back, if you guys were doing it again, do you think there was anything you could have done differently or advice you would share with someone that would help you help them get to where you are now and what, you know, this kind of vision that you have and feeling very concrete about that? Uh, help them get there sooner in the process? Like anything you would have done a little bit differently to help kind of figure that out? Uh, this is going to be a hard thing for anyone to actually make actionable. But uh, I know for me personally, um, my development as a leader of the team that, that we uh, build around us was just not as intentional and not as, as fast Um of growth as it should have been and, and it um i made it hard on the, on the people that, that worked for me um just with the, the lack of support that i would i would give and, and and it just wasn't there for them a lot um and so that's really the one one thing for me that i i really wish i, I could do differently um is focus more on that development and and seek out more growth in that area um once you have people people working for you and um uh, yeah the, that's it's hard it's a hard thing to just tell someone to to like figure out um there's an element of learning that's like you have to be in the right place at the right time to to, mm -hmm. to really like take hold of of something um but if you if you are looking to lead a team um and you never have before i think that figuring out how to do that well mm -hmm. is is probably the the biggest thing that you should focus on that's great and what and what i would do differently I, i've got i've got two things one thing i would say like faster is overrated mm -hmm. um uh like i I want to go fast. Like I, I push as hard as I can all the time and that's not super healthy. Uh, I think there are, there are two, like, I, I do think there are two kinds of people, like people who need to be told like, Hey, you need to step it up and you need to kick it into gear and you need to get going. In my experience, almost every person I've ever worked with in an industry do not need to be told that. Um, they need to be told like rest is okay. Like, 
um, like work towards building a, um, a sustainable life for yourself. Um, like it, you got, you got time. I mean, like the, this isn't the most important thing you're going to do in your life. Um, even though it feels like that all the time. Um, so like, yeah, just like practice that. I I've been terrible at it. Like I just, you know, like having kids has like forced me into that, but I wish I would have, uh, gotten better at that before getting to that state, you know, like mm. of, of, you know, taking a weekend and, and just not producing something, you know, not, right. not creating is like, it's good for you. Um, also, uh, maybe get a therapist. I think I, that's mm. the other thing, uh, that I think is a, a great idea. I've, I started doing therapy this year and, um, you we know, both have therapists. That's yeah, yeah. So not, I also have a uh, therapist. Uh, yeah, that I started last year, and it's helpful. It's so helpful to be able to just go talk to someone who's a neutral body about just everything that's going on. You know. Um, yep. And particularly like coming off this last year. Sorry, Zach, didn't mean to interrupt you, but oh, like, no, yeah. but I think it's like it's such a stigma, at least in the U.S. and I know probably elsewhere as well, that that's just not talked about. That like seeking out help like that is like frowned upon. Uh, you know, in the business space, but you know when you're dealing with you know, family partners, you know, work, uh, colleagues, all sorts of stuff, you know, to have someone neutral you can talk to, I think is really, really beneficial and everyone should be doing it more, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Especially if, 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 I mean, probably everyone should, but like, especially if you're, if you're leading people, like if you're a boss, like there are so many ways that you can go wrong in that. Um, like I, I, I've, I've learned that I put too much, too much on my shoulder, like too much on my shoulders and like I feel responsible for things that I shouldn't be feeling responsible mm. for. And that, that, um, led to a lot of unhappiness and, um, I don't know. It's just like, I maybe could have solved a lot of that mm. a lot earlier if I had, if I had done that sooner, but I didn't really think of something of that, like something that like, that was for me. Like it didn't feel like it was for me, mm. but I, mm. I would say like, yeah, just give it a shot. Um, if you can, I really like those three things, you know, talking about being, a leader, how to manage a team is important, kind of learning that trade a little bit sooner, not working too fast, which I think a lot of us are doing. And then, you know, feeling comfortable and, and seeking some outside help and being okay talking to other people about that and kind of you know, walking through it. I think those are all really good takeaways. We have about um, 15 minutes left. So I have a couple more questions for y'all and then um, I can open it up for anyone who has a question that's listening. We also had like a couple of um, social media questions trickle in that I could ask y'all as well. Um, you know, I asked, um, Odd fellows this the other day when they were on last week, you know, if you can like project in the future, I think this is a good question. So I'll ask you all this, you know, if you can project in the future and, you know, as the history books of motion design are written, you know, uh, you know, what do you want people to think about when they think about IV? Like, how do you want people to like, look back on what y'all have built or, or continue to build, of course, hopefully. Uh, but like, how should the history books reflect IV you think? Wow. It's a dangerous question. It's dangerous, uh, particularly now that y'all have the whole like product stuff that's going. This is not. This is not a cut and dry answer at this point. Hmm. You have an answer, Sam? <laughs> sure. I, I think I <laughs> would like it. Uh, probably a couple of things, but uh, the biggest one I think I the the biggest thing that I would want is to to be a place that people that have worked here. Um, think is think is amazing. Um, people people that that work with us that choose to give us parts of their lives to to invest in creating art um, feel like that was a great investment for them. Um, not necessarily monetarily or anything, but but that it was a great experience. Um, and then secondly, I, uh, we want to be like remembered as as people that did super awesome big things um <laughs> that, like did things that that uh studios before them hadn't hadn't done hadn't accomplished and and really pushed the boundaries of of what a creative studio can be yeah i i think that last part is especially resonates with me just like pushing the limits of what a creative studio can be like what can we successfully build a studio that like makes great works for clients and makes great work for ourselves that we're really proud of that have, you know, lasting impact on people. And, um, yeah, I personally, like, I, like, uh, I want to make great big things. I want to make masterpieces yeah. and I want to do it with people that I love and, um, and, 
yeah, build a studio that, that supports that. Nice. No, that's great. That's great. Um, all right. Another really tough one here uh, to follow that one up is, you know, would you rather fight one horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses? You know, now that we're talking about the history books have been painted. Now we can get into the really the tough stuff about <laughs> whether you'd rather f- like to fight one horse sized duck or a hundred horse duck sized horses. I've, I've learned my lesson on this one. Uh, one, one horse sized duck. For sure. I mean, I'm going to have one to deck. I, I'm assuming the ducks and horses are a metaphor for creative product, projects. So yeah. I would, I've historically said one horse sized duck. You know, mm-hmm. I was just like, I'm going to hit a home run on, yeah. on, on this one project is going to change everything. But no, you want to fight the hundred smaller ducks because you never know which duck is going to hit a home run. I'm really. So, you mean the you're, oh, you're wow. talk about the hundred horse sized? You went so deep with this. Uh, no, duck sized duck size horses. Yeah, horses yeah. Hundred duck sized horses. That's right. That's right. In that yeah. context, I agree. I don't know if anybody wants to <laughs> wants to read about that. Uh, Originals by Adam Grant. He talks about how how uh, frequency is much more helpful than than um, the effect of one thing. And so, uh, go read that book. But All the right, problem is, cool. is you you have to believe that the one thing you're working on is that thing. So it's tough, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. So I keep going be, back and forth. Be. I always thought the one, the one uh, horse sized duck, I could evade quicker. Uh, but I think to your point, Sam, if we're talking like metaphors and this is related to like tackling one massive project or a hundred other projects, give me the hundred projects for diversity, you know, and doing something different. Yeah. Doing the same thing every day over and over just sounds like monotony would kill me. <laughs> All right, I've got a few questions uh, from some of our social polls. Um, if anyone else in the audience who's listening in um, has a question for the guys, go ahead and raise your hand. I uh, would love to get some new thoughts in here. Um, but one of the ones that came in from the Instagram poll, um, it says, when did you feel like was the right time to start your studio? So I know we, when y'all started it, but how did it feel like it was the right time? Someone asked. I don't know, again, we were just so dumb. We were just so dumb that we were like, yeah, this is a good time to start a studio. Um, uh, now, nowadays, if I'm answering this from, from experience, I think the best time to start a studio is when you feel like you have a vision for something that you can't find. Um, or do alone. Or, or, well, I think even that, if you don't have something that's different than somewhere mm. else, you should just go work there. You're going to have a lot better time in your life. Um, <laughs> and have more studio, of life to enjoy. Running a studio <laughs> sucks so often. Um, and there's not a lot of benefits to it. So uh, wow, That's a downer. <laughs> that's a downer. Seems like we do products now. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's great. Um, all right, here's another one. Uh, someone asked, how do you like scale up from the first few employees or staff? Like, how did you know when it was like the right time to like hire folks? Was it just, you were so burned out with work that was like, Oh my gosh, we got to hire someone. Was it a money thing? Did you have a plan? Like how'd you hire those Sam, first initial employees? Sam tells me it's time and I'm terrified. That's how, <laughs> that's how it goes. That is how um, it's like, I don't know if, I don't know if we can afford that. And he's like, no, we can afford that. And I was like, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of money. And then, uh, and then we just do it and then it works out. That, that's, uh yeah it's actually changed um it is in the process of changing right now in the past it's been like we have so much work we just need to hire some more people like Mm -hmm. and that's why we hire people uh now we are trying to hire for strategic goals to to have the right size team for the amount of projects that we want to take on um at at any given time with the appropriate amount of freelancers to fill in those Mm -hmm. gaps Speaking of which, we are hiring animators and yeah, illustrators. Hey, right that's, now. Who, that's so, who's listening right hey, now. Or your Y'all friends. Go sign up. <laughs> know someone who wants to work at Ivy. We would love to talk to you. So please email us jobs at ivy.studio. Nice. That's great. Well, folks, you couldn't work for a better uh, group of guys. I mean, I've known y'all now for five years. Really love what y'all are doing at the studio. I mean, you know, the whole development and then offering the product side of things has been really cool to see and it's inspiring i'll say from uh myself and our studio and other ones just to see like what studios can evolve into and offering these secondary arms it's it's really cool to see what you all are doing um so yeah it looks like i was gonna see if anyone had any questions in the chat uh but we got a bunch of 
folks who are just listening today. No worries. We'll get you next time. Um, if you're just listening and just chilling, um, then go on over to, what is it, iv.studio and uh, submit a job application, you know, and, and get in with these guys. It'd be a great place to work. Um, well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you all both so much for joining us at another MoGraph Lunch. Again, as a reminder, we do this every Friday, uh, one o'clock Eastern time. Um, if there are studios, freelancers, uh, people that we should know about that you'd love to talk with, uh, feel free to shoot me uh, a message on Instagram at dash underscore NC, or you can reach me at, uh, at Mac underscore motion on Twitter. Would love to find some more people to connect with. Um, and then stay tuned on some stuff from the Dash Bash blog. We're trying to update that more with some Takeover Tuesdays, highlighting various freelancers and more industry topics. Uh, so we'll have more going on there. And then of course, hopefully uh, we will see you all at um, the Dash Bash later this September. Right now, tickets are set to go on sale on May 29th, so the end of this month, which is crazy. Um, but with everything that's going on, we are playing an in-person event. North Carolina is opening back up. We have over 50% vaccinations here, at least in Wake County, which is solid. Um, so we're excited about having everyone here. And hopefully you guys can make it as well, too. I know Tennessee is not too far away, so we'd love to see you. Barring any disasters, we will be there. Perfect. Love it. Well, guys, enjoyed it. Thank you all so much. Enjoy your weekend and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This is, this is great. Hey, thanks, Ooh. Meg.